So what is the difference between USB-C and Thunderbolt 3, and is there even a difference? Let's find out. All right, so everyone's seen this new connection. I'll have a couple pictures of it up here. But basically, this is the new USB-C connection, and it's, a, it's been out since, I think, 2015, but it's, it's basically a unidirectional connection you can stick into any system. You know, you don't have, it doesn't have to go one way or the other. It can go either up or down. And basically, this connection is kind of the newest standard on phones and a, you know, billions of other devices. So what's the difference between you know, this USB-C and then Thunderbolt 3, which shares the same interface? Well, I'm going to go through that today. So what I want to do today is tell you the difference between those. And I also get a lot of questions on my videos, like tons of questions about this. You know, this is a NVMe external drive, and you know, it's, it's got a USB-C connection. Um, a lot of people ask me, well, what's the fastest connection I can get through this, this interface? Um, well, the difference is really going to be, you know, what, what is the actual, so the connection type is USB-C, but there's three different types of USB-C that actually will determine how fast this is going to actually be. And I'll go through that today and share that with you. I, mean, I have good charts and everything that you can save. It should give you kind of a good idea of how to figure this out. But in a nutshell, let's just go ahead and start with the connection type. It's called USB-C, so that's actually the, the type of connection. It's just the way it's shaped, more or less. And, and again, I'll have some pictures up here so you can see them. But more or less, that's the way it's shaped. Now, that, going through that interface, there's really three main, um, you know, I guess you'd call it connectivity throughputs. Um, one of them is going to be um, USB 3.1 Gen 1. One of them is going to be USB 3.1 Gen 2. And then the third one is going to be Thunderbolt 3, which is, you know, something that you'd find on a, on a Mac behind me here. So, for instance, this 2017 iMac has two Thunderbolt 3 ports on it, and they look just like this USB connection because they, uh, they are a USB Type-C but the throughput is uh, going to be Thunderbolt. And this will all makes sense in a second because I kind of want to make sure people understand the differences when you're buying stuff like hubs or when you're buying stuff like external hard drives. You know, what is the speed I can expect to get? All right, so this is the chart that you want to check out. This is the most important. So we just talked about there's three different types of USB-C. There's Thunderbolt 3, and then there's going to be 3.1 Gen 1 and 3.1 Gen 2. So let's go ahead and break this down. So functionality of port. Port speed, so Thunderbolt 3 is 40 gigabits per second, you know, really fast. It can actually, um, let's say you're going to try to run some external displays, Thunderbolt 3 can do two 4K displays or one 5K display. This also uses PCIe bus, which enables use of eGPU, so if you want to run external GPUs, you can do that with Thunderbolt 3. Now, Thunderbolt 3 is basically backwards compatible with the right adapter to Thunderbolt 2 and Thunderbolt 1. Um, it also is a USB-C device like we talked about, these all are. And then it can also be compatible with legacy USB 3.x, 2.x devices using an adapter with speed limited to the device's capabilities. And finally, you can daisy chain this. So you can daisy chain Thunderbolt 3 many devices in a row, like up to six, um, to get, you know, just to kind of use, you know, it basically runs through one device and onto the other one. It's kind of cool. You don't need a hub that way. But with USB Type-C, um, the Gen 1 and the Gen 2, it's completely different. So for instance, here you get, on Gen 1, you get up to 5 gigabits per second, not 40. On Gen 2, you get 10 gigabits per second, not 40. So obviously that's eight times less and that's four times less. You can only run one 4K display. You can't run two or 5K. You can only run one 4K. You cannot use the eGPU, as we had talked about. And then USB-C devices, it's compatible with because it is one. But um, legacy USB 3.x, 2.x devices using an adapter will work also. But it's not compatible with Thunderbolt, and that's the thing to remember because Thunderbolt 3 is USB-C, but these two are not Thunderbolt because Thunderbolt's the top of the you know the top dog, and then. You know, just save this chart and you can reference it for later. But the main thing over here, the one thing I wanted to talk about too, this is kind of what you know people always ask me, and this blue chart's not part of the white chart, it's its own chart. But a lot of people ask me, like, if I get an external drive, how fast can it be, you know, depending on this drive and my connection speed? Well, if you're connecting through a USB C, let's say you connect through a Gen 1. That's five gigabits per second. So that's really 5,000 megabits per second, right? And you divide by eight to get from bits to bytes, vice versa. And so that's really, you know, Gen 1 is capable of 625 megabytes per second. So if you see a hard drive like a Samsung, say, stating it can go up to 500 megabytes per second, this should theoretically be able to handle it. The problem is, is, you know, there's overheads, so you might be right at the limit or get a little bit less. If you go up to Gen 2, that's 10 gigabits per second, and that's 10,000 megabits per second. You divide by 8 again, theoretically that's 1,250 megabytes per second. So 1,250 megabytes can handle some NVMe drives. It's
it's definitely a lot faster than SATA drives. But there's overhead, so you might get like 1,000 or 1,100 megabytes per second with Gen 2. Finally, Thunderbolt is, is 40 gigabits per second, time, you know, times it by 1,000, 40,000 megabytes per second, um, megabits per second, I'm sorry, divide by 8, and then you get 5,000 theoretical megabytes per second on, on Thunderbolt 3. So what that basically means is you can pretty much run any NVMe drive at all, as long as you have the right connection and the right enclosure that's capable of Thunderbolt 3. Don't forget, there's always overhead, like I said. So even if it's theoretically says 625, you know, across the cable, you might get 500 or so. So that tells you basically, you know, exactly what you might get in real world examples. And I'm going to go ahead and show you some real products here in a second that show you like what you'd want to buy, depending on what you, you know, if you bought this enclosure, how fast can you expect it to be? And maybe that'll clarify some things also. All right, so if you're trying to build an external hard drive enclosure, here are some things just to kind of, you know, from what we learned, I want to kind of go through what you'd want to buy. Um, I'm going to have links to all this stuff in my description, so check it out if you want to kind of see these products. Let's just say you wanted to get a, let's say you're looking at this hard drive as an external drive, and it's a Samsung 860 Evo. As you can see, if we scroll down into the into the um, specs here, it, here's what it says, up to 550 mega, megabytes per second. Um, so that's going to be in the read speed. Write speed is going to be 520 megabytes per second. So according to our chart, you know, USB Gen 1 should be able to handle this, um, USB Type-C Gen 1. But realistically, the Gen 2 are so cheap now, um, they can handle, you know, up to the 1250. But this actually falls within that range, even though with overhead, though, you may not get all of it if you went with the Gen 1. So I recommend going with the Gen 2. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to buy a Gen 2 enclosure like this. And this says right here, it's going to be Gen 2 USB Type-C, I see up here, and that's 10 gigabits per second, divided by, again, 8, that's 1250 capable megabytes per second. You know, the drive that we're going to be putting in here is only capable of 550, you know, remove some overhead, so it should get the full throughput of that drive if you get this drive with this enclosure. And I'll have links to those. So the next one, let's say you're looking at an NVMe drive, and this is a good one from Inland. Um, it's an Inland Premium 512 gigabyte SSD for 74 bucks only. Go down to the specs down here. Now this one's capable of 3,100 megabytes per second and 1,900 megabytes per second. So the issue here is you really need a Thunderbolt 3 drive, you know, connection for this if you want to get the full capacity. But what I recommend is if you go online, you know, here for 25.99, you can get a three USB Type C. You can see the Type C connections. Make sure that's that's the case. But you can get a Gen 2, which again is 10 gigabits per second divided by 8. That's 1,250 megabytes per second that this will be able to, you know, theoretically for throughput minus some overhead. So you won't get the full throughput of this, this SSD because this is much higher, but you will get a big portion of that. It's going to slow it down a little bit. Thunderbolt 3 gets extremely expensive, so you have to look at pricing. So this enclosure with this drive is going to give you the, up to that 1,250 theoretically. Um, Anyways, so as you go down, let's, you know, the, the, just to kind of give you an example, here is a pre-made one, uh, Other World Computing. It's a great site. Go check it out. They do a ton of stuff with Apple. But long story short, they make their own very custom products. You can see this one's made for Thunderbolt 3, so you're going to get a full 2,800 megabytes per second. Look at the performance here, up and down. The problem is, is... You know, again, it's not a problem if you need it because if you want really fast connections. Look at the pricing though. For 480 gigabytes, you're paying 229, and then for one terabyte, 299, which isn't bad for that speed, almost 3,000 megabytes per second. But when you get up to two and four, you know, you're looking at a lot higher cost because this this is the Thunderbolt, you know, USB Type C again. Thunderbolt, see the little uh, the little lightning bolt there. Um, but this is a lot more expensive technology. That's why I say, you know, it's better sometimes to go with the Gen 2 instead of the Thunderbolt 3. So as we go down the list, here's a great hub. This is going to be, let's look at it, USB 3.1. This is just a type uh, Gen 1 hub. So USB, um, you know, let's call it USB type C. You can see the end of the cable and it's going to be a type 1. So what does that mean? That means it's basically capable of 600 and something megabytes per second. So if you connect like a different ports into here and you want to, you know, move, move data, let's say to a hard drive, this is only Gen 1, but it's only 54 bucks. Uh, obviously the pricing is very cheap on it. And it can do up to, um, you know, it can do basically a, a lot of throughput up to 500 and something, 600 megabytes per second. But if you go down the list here and you want to go up to like a, a true Thunderbolt 3 DAC, which is 
capable of that, you know, 5,000 megabytes per second, you're going to pay for it. Um, here's, the, here's the Thunderbolt symbols. You can see them on the dock there. You can see them in here. And as we go down, again, you're going to pay for it. Um, you know, it's $294 for this dock versus $54 because you're paying for all that. Now, granted, this dock is going to be capable of a lot of other things, you know, running um, a whole bunch of, um, you know, GPUs through it and, and, you know, daisy chaining stuff off of it and running two 4K and one 5K display. So this is a lot more capable if you need it, but a lot more expensive. And then finally, just remember when you're buying stuff, you know, for your drives and all that stuff, there's three parts of it. There's the drive, the cable, and then there's the enclosure. And they all have to meet the same specs, basically. So when you're using Thunderbolt 3, you got to buy a Thunderbolt 3 cable. Make sure it's got the little uh, lightning bolt on it. If you buy just a normal USB Gen 1 or Gen 2 cable, it may not give you all that throughput. And then you might have run into some, some problems later. So just make sure you can do that. I'm going to have links to all, this, to all these products in the description. But I hope that really helps clarify some stuff out there. So the one thing to remember from the video is all Thunderbolt 3 ports are going to be USB-C ports. They're kind of backwards compatible. But not all USB-C ports are Thunderbolt ports. So Thunderbolt has to have this little, you know, little symbol on it, like a little lightning bolt. And then you know you have the top of the line that can actually do all of those. But if you only have a Gen 1 or a Gen 2 port that looks exactly the same, you can't do Thunderbolt speeds. And that's really the main difference from this. Um, and so, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I just wanted to kind of uncover what, what's possible here. And hopefully it helps a lot of people out. I mean, I was really confused with it as well. But maybe by showing you the devices and if you can, you know, pause that chart and kind of figure the chart out and stuff, it's going to help you fight, figure out exactly, you know, how these things work. So just wanted to kind of help people out there. I know this is kind of one of those things that's just, you know, I don't know why they made it so difficult naming everything, showing everything, look, making it all look the same. But at the end of the day, it does. And so that's all I really wanted to do is just demystify it for everyone. So anyways, you guys watch my channel. If you can subscribe, it would definitely help me out. Talk to you soon. I make a couple of videos a week. We'll talk to you in a few days.